True crime, a terrible sight. World of YouTube. Numbnuts here. Today we are at the Lincoln Woods, and I can't believe it's already ten years since I started my first missing person video set. Um, the Taj Narbon story. This year will mark thirty, no, forty-two years. Of him been gone. And whatever happened that night. At his home. Just up the street. In Lemonster, Mass. Very sad story. Of course, I think the stepfather had something to do with it. Due to the fact that he would always harass um, Taj. And call him the white king for whatever reason at the time his mother and him had a special bond and I kind of think that uh, Mr. Clarence Dean didn't like that <clears throat> and 10 years ago this year I was feeling restless in my apartment in Devil and Passway I was looking for something to do at the time, and I grabbed a bunch of papers that I used for the pug at the time, for bathroom stuff, because he used to, you know, have accidents sometimes. And I uh, picked up a paper, and there was the picture I saw <clears throat> in 1982. And not only that, like I said in all my other videos, I pretty much met that kid somewhere. I don't <laughs> Because I used to be a wanderer throughout this town. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, go messing around at the parks. And down here, I used to live probably one, three, four, five, six, seven, eight houses down on the left. I used to take the school bus to Fall Brook. Up this road in 1982. Taj's house is right here. On the right. The one higher up. Not the little white one. But the one that's higher up above it. And. Like I say. A lot of people have been. Known to stop there. And look. But please respect the people there. And <clears throat> do not bother them. I th when I went there, I kind of, you know, thinking that I was saying I was like Taj's friend would have made a difference, but it didn't. I irritated the people. <clears throat> but, um, you know, I used to drive by these woods on the bus and get the... And there's no lie, you can believe it or not, but I used to get an airy feeling of these woods. And when I saw that um, face on the milk carton, and then seeing it again in the newspaper, I mean, oh my God, the things that rushed through my head <clears throat> at that time. So I decided to take myself and uh, started my own series of videos about it. Where they, where uh, Clarence Dean kidnapped his mother, pretty much. Drove her up Route 2 all the way up Route 91, back down 91, back to Route 2, all the way back to Lemonster. Kids soiled there, two younger kids soiled in, you know, feces and, and pee because they couldn't, you, you know, change the diapers and, it was just a friggin' mess back then. And whatever that guy did to lose his mind, whether it be, you know, Taj's mother not giving him his proper, you know, say-so, marital, <clears throat> uh, how can I say that? Love. Uh... It was just a nasty situation. You can just imagine what poor Taj went through the night he went missing. 
And there is something I need to find out because I was thinking about taking a uh, metal detector through here. Because I did the where the woods and the sign. I did a video out there one night. And <clears throat> I did get a knock in the tree in the woods out there. Because uh, I was trying to see if I could, like, communicate with Taj through the dead. And, but, honestly, <clears throat> I think, and I hope Detective Abishan, a retired officer but still works on the case, does a uh, something for the 42nd. I'll have to email him and see if he is, but I'd love to volunteer he come out here because we're the... Now the ground is soft. It's a 10-year anniversary after his, you know, last uh, <clears throat> anniversary in the paper 32 years ago. Right, I hope he does something this year to search not only the woods that he thinks at the end of Christine Street, but I think this area right here should be looked into. Because I had gotten a couple comments on my videos of someone asking me <clears throat> if there's like a waterway bridge or something. And here's the water. And I want to say that, oh, well, it's a little sewer thing. <clears throat> of course, you know, this certainly looks like a bridge. But what really tracks me to this tension, to, um, uh, Attracts me to this location. Not only do I think because the house being right up there. Where is it? Yeah, that house right there. And how easy access it would be to come just down here. Go out f more this way through the woods. Because this, this wooded area, I tell you, it's, it's pretty big. And what I think had happened was Clarence... Uh, Pre-dug a grave and um, buried him. <clears throat> now, someone had told me that they had seen, can't say and reveal names, but a psychic. And the psychic was talking about a farm fence. And she could see Taj standing there, a farm fence, confused. And lo and behold, right here, this used to have a bottom half. And if anybody knows about the old days, farmers, they used to make fences similar to this with two or three pieces of wood or four. As you can see, my fingers would um, <clears throat> um, be used as the fence post. You can see it would look like a farm fence. And this right here is an old fence. Up there further, it gets changed, I think, and I think they're gonna maybe one day fix this, or maybe even make a better fencing, but I could see him standing here looking at his house and being confused of why he can't go there or why he don't wanna go there because yeah, he was petrified of Clarence. Uh, man, I'm just getting chills, and I don't get the chills, and it's not because it's cold out here either. It's because it's, I, I just feel something in these woods, and I would love to search it. I was thinking about grabbing my metal detector, but I got to ask a question first and to somebody to, to know if Taj, if he ever wore a belt with a belt buckle. Because if he did, I can guarantee that in a shallow grave, I could probably find it. Find him, I mean, and find it. But, um, does it, like, like, um, <clears throat> Detective Abishan said, the best time to get searching would be where this, after the snow melts and it's all mushy and mud. And I think with this year should be done something done. I would love to put up posters, but I tried that, and people ripped them down. <laughs> it's like, geez, thanks a lot. But um, 
I tell you, man, I, I just feel that he's out in these woods somewhere off of Union Street. I mean, don't get me wrong, the, the Christine Street is not too far, but the briefing of the story is, is right two, one, one or two in the morning. Clarence is up drinking as Taj's mother went to bed, but she woke up. Didn't see Clarence at the moment until she, he came in from out of, outside and scared her. Knocked all over the cans on the table, beer cans. And she's like, oh my God, you better go check on. Now this is the thing. Why she didn't go and check on Taj and told him to go check on him to make sure he Taj thought nothing was going on because of the ruckus, because Clarence spooking her. She went back to bed. And that's the story in the paper as you read it. And for whatever reason, she made him go check him when the history between them was not good is beyond me. <clears throat> that kind of disgusts me. Being a parent, I would never put my kid in any danger. And if it were, and if it was in, if I was in a relationship with a person like that, I'd already been done and gone. And see you later, pal. And see you if I was a woman. Get the hell away from me. You know, your child is, should be the first thing that comes in any bad relationship first. Especially when you do a uh, instant family. But she ended up having two kids from this man. And, of course, right, bared the, the, the torture that that man gave her. They weren't, he was not a nice person. I can guarantee you that. You can look up the stories on my videos, the Taj and our bone story, which I think I got a lot of more videos. I got to change the name on. I'm going to do that <clears throat> so I can make it one. I do got it in a video. Um, damn it. A video. Uh, what is it called? Playlist. And uh, I want need to get out in these set of woods. Hopefully one day I can get out here and when I get some time, hopefully Detective Abishan will be on the, making some kind of check because with the cadaver dogs, right, he said he wanted to get in the ground being soft and I can step him right on right now going down and I can feel my foot going in a hole. would be nice to give a search to both set of woods. <clears throat> but that is the story, and I tell you, man, every day I, if I come by this way, I always, always, of course, who wouldn't, if you knew the story, just keep looking out here, and I had a dream of finding Taj in the woods, and he was just standing there dazed and confused, and I was like, Taj, but, you know, yeah. Uh, that's why I say he's he's in one of these set of woods. I, well, I can guarantee it. There have been some things that have been said that I cannot reveal. All right? It's just got to be that way. Because like I say, when I get into some cases, that's right. I get some info. That's all I can say. But there have been other <clears throat> places that are known, but finding them is the um, problem, because these are places we're talking about from 1981, I don't even think exists no more, <clears throat> but with that being said, I still think that the strong point of the story lies within these woods, because if this guy, Clarence, wanted to drive somewhere, then come back. If the question is, you know, back then, if you're in a secluded neighborhood with no traffic and you're starting up vehicles, I would think there would be one person in that house that would jump up in the middle of the night saying, who the hell is leaving at this time? 
Unless, yeah, the people knew these two Taj's people known to be, you know, up all night partiers and stupid stuff come out of them, and you know how that works, but it's just insane. And just as much as this story is insane, but I'm trying to keep this story alive just like any other story, uh, and right. 2021 is 42 years. Uh, yeah, wow, and it's just... Whew. <clears throat> I would love to solve this case. I would love to see it solved at that. Whatever comes first. Because, man, no kidding. Should be, um... You know, the, the main thing about this case, the main thing... Taj's shoes that he wore weren't even on his feet. And what kid leaves on a... And it's cool today. We're in March. We got some cool days. Yesterday, you know, both yesterday and today I had frost on my windows. And I'm sure when March comes rolling, I mean the 31st, no, the 30th, I believe it's the 30th. Uh, yeah, the, or the, well, the 30th or 31st is the actual day. I mean, they got days warming up coming in, and, and it was supposedly raining. And actually, I think I looked that up, too. If it was, and it was a cool, like a misty rain, not a full rain, but just a misty rain enough to, you know, get drips on your head, but not soak you. And I did look that up, and it's like, why would a kid leave it out of shoes? Yeah, a kid leave it out of shoes because he's in a sack on someone's shoulder being dragged to a burial ground. No questions asked. But I got to get out of here. I mean, even though I'm parked in the right place, I see people over here saying, Hey, someone in the woods. You know how people are sometimes, you know. I did come out woods that night. The guy came out. At first, I'm thinking, whoa, what's that? Hey, is that a ghost? No, some guy asked me what the hell I'm doing out here. And I told him about the story. He didn't even know about it. And then when I told him what I was doing, he was like, oh, oh, wow. <clears throat> but, yep, this is one of those cases, people, that is unsolved and just, Tragic. Union Street Lemons the Mass. 42 years ago. <clears throat> and I tell you, when I saw them pictures on the milk cart, saw that picture in the newspapers, and just the way it happened. It literally freaked me out. I mean, <laughs> just to think that many years and then all of a sudden, <laughs> and I wasn't reading newspapers at that time. I mean, after that is when I started really um, getting into the newspapers just to see if something else would come out. But, uh, that was it, and I was like, wow. I couldn't believe I was looking at that same picture. I mean, they do have other picture, pictures of him, but that's the one they put on the milk carton. And I don't know if he was the second kid, maybe, compared to the first kid on the milk carton back in that time. Whatever it may be, I was like, wow. Just freaked me out. And I mean, yeah, I mean, I stood out in these woods, like I said. I mean, his whole body, spirit could be moving throughout these woods, just, of course, scared. And, um, yeah, confused. <laughs> like the psychic said. And I believe some, sometimes there are true psychics out there. And if they saw that farm fence, and that's right over there along the road, it, it just makes me wonder. 
And it makes me believe he's out here somewhere. I mean, don't get me wrong. I respect Detective Avishan's location. He's a great detective. But I honestly think, man, I sat down and talked to him about it. I think he's out here somewhere. <clears throat> this is a huge wooded area. <clears throat> and what better way to do a quick burial and not disturb, you know, the peace over there quietly. And how he got him out of the house and how he killed him in the house suffocation pillow and Clarence Dean wasn't a small man back then either nothing like a big boy trying to overpower weak small people because he's a POS probably can't deal a real man <clears throat> but anyways this is the story Hopefully I got the time, like I say, time's a mess with me, and I want to hopefully try and get out here again on the 31st, but in that area where I wasn't, and I want to go, I might try and come out here at night if I can get my damn camera that I've been waiting for a little money to come in to get, but it might not, God dang it, happen. Happen. Yeah. But until that next video, people, be safe, take care, and always beware. Stories like this that make the world just look at it and say, Urgh. not good. Out.